Ever since Pope Francis mentioned the name Thomas Merton as one of the four figures from American history that he holds up as a way of structuring his address to the joint session in Congress, a number of people have asked, who is Thomas Merton and how do I learn more about him? Why is it that Pope Francis mentions this guy? And so, if you're interested in knowing more about the man, uh, the Trappist monk, the author that Pope Francis holds up as a modern spiritual influence, as somebody who is a guide for many people, as somebody who is a man first and foremost of prayer and also one who challenged, as Pope Francis puts it, the certitudes of his time, wasn't afraid to be prophetic, wasn't afraid to call out systems of injustice or uh, other practices of abuse and uh, lack of fairness. Um, he was somebody who was held up by Pope Francis as a man of dialogue and a peacemaker, somebody who, who built bridges among people. If you want to know more about him, the first thing I would suggest is read some of his books, read some of his own writings. One of the best ways to get into his writings is to take a little sampling from among uh, the various texts that he, he wrote. Uh, one great way to do this is a book called Thomas Merton Essential Writings. It's edited by Christine Boshin and is part of the Orbis Books uh, Modern Spiritual Master Series. It's a great book, a great way to get a little snippet from each different kind of category, theme, text, and period of Merton's writings uh, throughout his life. So I recommend that. You could also start with one of his more classic books. Uh, his spiritual autobiography, The Seven-Story Mountain, from which Pope Francis himself quotes uh, in his address to Congress. That's a good place to begin for a lot of people. Um, I do like to caution folks, though, from the get-go that it's somewhat dated, at least in its style. Its, it's writing and its richness is so worth reading all the way through. Um, it's, it's something that you will not regret in whole, but uh, I've heard from many people that it's hard to kind of get excited about it uh, because he's writing in a style that's more, uh, more in line with the, that w which was popular in the 1940s. So, um, reader beware, um, but stick with it. I think you'd be, uh, you know, you'll be glad you did. Um, if that doesn't sound appealing as a good way to start, I suggest perhaps taking a look at his book, New Seeds of Contemplation. This is one of my personal favorites. It deals with uh, questions of prayer and contemplation about the inner life, about one's true identity or calling, about the discovery of God, who is God, how do I relate to God, how do I relate to other people in this world. Um, it's a series of very short chapters that make for great spiritual reading, prayer, and reflection. New Seeds of Contemplation. Another book that's good to begin with is a book called Conjectures of a Guilty Bystander. It's a collection of various little snippets, little reflections that deal with concerns of a very timely fashion, uh, especially in Merton's own lifetime. Uh, it was published in the mid-60s, 1960s, and so questions about civil rights and racism, about violence and war, uh, about justice and so on, these are the questions that uh, arise in conjectures. And it's another book, not unlike New Seeds of Contemplation, that allows for a lot of uh, slow reading, reflection, uh, contemplation, rereading, coming back to, uh, it will, I have no doubt, elicit a lot of uh, questions and reflections and feedback from, from you in, in your own exploration of the text. Another book that I would recommend is one that was also published in the 60s called Seeds of Destruction. Now, Seeds of Destruction is a book that uh, contains a number of essays that deal with timely topics. Very unfortunately, some of these topics are still relevant for us today. In particular, there's an essay in there called Letters to a White Liberal. And in this essay, Merton very powerfully, in a very challenging way, addresses the question of racism in the United States, and in a particular way, deals with racism from, in, from the vantage point of uh, institutional racism or systemic racism uh, in the ways in which uh, white people tend to benefit from the way the, the status quo structures um, while people of color continue to be oppressed and marginalized. Um, it's, it's a text that very sadly remains relevant for us in our own day. Uh, it's well worth reading, so I encourage you to take a look at that as well. You may be interested in uh, a biographical overview, uh, in which case a very accessible, easy-to-read book is called Living with Wisdom by Jim Forrest. 
It's a biography of Thomas Merton, uh, and it also includes a lot of photographs so that you can get a visual representation of Merton's whole life from childhood through uh, his later years as a monk. Uh, another book that's uh, a good one to explore if you want a sense of Merton's own thought and the richness of his uh, theological worldview is a book by the uh, theologian Lawrence Cunningham. The book is called Thomas Merton in the Monastic Vision. Now this book's a little bit more scholarly, it's a little bit more academic, um, but it's not inaccessible, it's still uh, very readable, and it gives you a good introduction to Merton's background, his influences, uh, as well as his own writings and things that were important to him. So if you're looking for more depth or, uh, or you're interested in his kind of theological or spiritual background, take a look at that book. Finally, I guess I have to recommend my own book. Uh, my publisher wouldn't be very happy if I didn't, and it's something that I think you may be very interested in as well, and that's called The Franciscan Heart of Thomas Merton. Now, while the overarching theme of the book is an exploration of how the Franciscan tradition, St. Francis of Assisi, theologians and spiritual writers that follow him, how, how all of this influences Merton's own life uh, writings and thought, um, there are also, in the early chapters, uh, overviews of, of Merton's biography, as well as new research, new information and ways of looking at his early life that haven't really been explored before. So you'll get, uh, it's a little bit of something for everybody. I encourage you to check that out as well. I wish you all the best as you begin or continue to explore Merton's life and writings. May the Lord give you peace.